holy cow guys it is not over an abc whistleblower just came forward and they claim that they have secret recordings that will prove that abc news rigged the presidential debate now honestly guys i'm hearing all sorts of things about this news i've even heard one rumor say that the whistleblower just died in a car accident now whatever the case is if this whistleblower turns out to be true well let's just pray for their safety and that they stay alive long enough to expose the truth about the abc presidential debate. Now, in the meantime, people are now boycotting ABC, CNN, NBC, and even CBS to fight for fairness and objectivity in the media. So yeah, there definitely is a movement that's starting and we're making sure that our channel and our community gets in on the ground floor of this collective effort to get to the truth about our country right here and right now. So it all started with this affidavit that was said to be from an anonymous ABC News whistleblower. Now, apparently the whole thing blew up online and it went viral as the document alleges close collaboration between the network and Kamala Harris's campaign leading all the way up to the recent debate against Donald Trump. Translation, this may very well be proof that Kamala Harris rigged the debate. Concrete evidence, billionaire investor Bill Ackman, he reshared viral screenshots of the affidavit and even tagged Disney CEO Bob Iger for answers. He said that he finds the allegations credible as written, particularly because the affidavit was reportedly made the day before the debate and it mentions details like Harris's smaller podium that only became public later. He stopped short of confirming the authenticity of the affidavit and its claims about the presidential debate. But he did say though that what was said there substantially matches what unfolded during the debate and that moderators keeping quiet about these claims makes him think about the negative inference to it. So the billionaire investor is urging Iger and Disney to investigate this matter. But more precisely, he said that our democracy depends on transparency, especially concerning events that could influence the outcome of a presidential election. So the whistleblower said in the affidavit, I have worked for ABC News for over 10 years in various technical and administrative positions. The alleged staffer who says they do not support Donald Trump claims they observed significant transformations in the nature of news reporting at the organization within that span, as well as a shift from unbiased reporting to a model influenced by external factors. They state the intent of the affidavit is solely to address concerns regarding perceived biases within news reporting within their employer's debate. Republican vice presidential candidate J.D. Vance responded to the ABC Newsblower News and said it could be a national scandal if it's proven true. What is your reaction to ABC News whistleblower affidavit saying Kamala got a leg up in the debate? And are you concerned about your own debate coming up that, that CBS will not leak anything to Wall? You know, on my own debate, I mean, the attitude that I take and I know President Trump takes is we should go anywhere, we should talk to everybody, and if that means that there's going to be a slightly biased debate, I don't care. That's the price of doing business. Uh, I have heard the reports of the ABC whistleblower. I haven't seen anything about it myself. My attitude is, of course, if it happened, it's disgraceful and should be a national scandal, but it's one of those things where I'd like to see a little bit more information come in before I actually develop an opinion. So at this point, guys, we need one or two staff members from ABC to also come out and be brave enough to echo what this person's claiming just to prove that this is not a conspiracy. Because seriously, guys, I read the affidavit for you and what it says, the claims that it makes about the debate preparation process and ABC News involvement, it would make your skin crawl from disgust. So the first one is the most obvious that Kamala Harris was given access to sample or similar questions before the debate. Now, a lot of people have commented how well rehearsed her answers were to the question. Questions. So getting these sample questions would definitely have given her an advantage over Donald Trump by allowing her to better prepare for the specific topics that were going to be raised. But even worse than being given the questions is the claim that Kamala Harris's campaign also actively controlled the kind of questions that were going to be asked. For one, the affidavit claimed that they actively blocked ABC News from questioning Joe Biden's health. True enough, I mean, we didn't hear a peep about it, even though it's something that has been debated throughout the election. It's it's why they had to switch in Harris last minute, right? With that being said, I totally get it if Harris's team ensured that this line of questioning was off limits. But it wasn't just that though. The affidavit also claims that the Harris campaign influenced ABC News to avoid probing into allegations against Harris's brother-in-law, who has also been accused of embezzling billions of dollars in taxpayer money. So yeah, for real guys, it's also mentioned that ABC staff members were fearful of retribution from Trump, meaning they could have felt pressure to comply with the Harris campaign's request to avoid conflict. Now, hold 
on to your hats, guys, because this next part is where it really gets even more hair raising. So the whistleblower claims to have secret recordings that prove the Harris campaign pressured moderators to fact check Donald Trump during the debate. Needless to say, if these recordings exist, they could offer evidence to support these claims, not to mention completely blow up the election in a very significant way. Can somebody say election interference? Because this affidavit really took down the whole debate hard. It said that ABC News was given instructions about which questions to steer clear of during the debate, meaning the Harris campaign had significant influence over the content and the flow of the event. And like what we saw with the three on one against Donald Trump, this included a demand for live fact checking of Trump, while Harris herself faced no scrutiny, even when she made statements that were factually questionable. Now, let me tell you guys, things are really going to start happening real fast out here because the whistleblower has reportedly signed the affidavit in New York and also sent a copy to Speaker Mike Johnson, meaning it is now in the hands of political leadership already. So we could see a House investigation into the matter pretty soon. Because seriously, guys, even without this affidavit, people have some serious questions about the Trump-Harris debate. Just check out this breakdown from Fox's Laura Ingram. The devil's bargain. That's the focus of tonight's angle. All right, I want you to ignore most of the commentary you've heard from the pundit class on the debate last night. As usual, the talking heads misread the concerns of millions of Americans watching at home. Tonight, I'm going to give you the key takeaways from the debate. First, ABC's moderators were essentially acting as Kamala Harris's debate coaches. Time and again, they served up softballs with zero follow-ups. Vice President Harris, you call climate change an existential threat. What would you do to fight climate change? A really quick response here, Vice President Harris, on this notion of weaponization of the Justice Department. One of your campaign's top lawyers responded saying, we won't let Donald Trump intimidate us. We won't let him suppress the vote. Is that what you believe he's trying to do here? You're great. Do you agree you're great? Now, this is entirely predictable. Now, remember, a top exec at Disney, whose portfolio includes ABC News, is a longtime pal of Kamala Harris. But another key point, and I think very, very important, is that Vice President Harris showed us last night that she's really not a lot more than a puppet of the failed DC establishment. Now, she took weeks to rehearse, during which she said no, had no adversarial press interviews, and then, with a friendly panel, showed that she can memorize some lines and speak in platitudes. From the start, Harris knew she would not be fact-checked or ask real follow-up questions. But still, even with her absurd ABC running mates helping her, Harris revealed a lot about herself. And the picture was not altogether positive. Regular Americans who don't sit in studios like this, who don't get paid to talk for a living, will not be moved. She didn't talk about her policy changes between 2020 and 2024. Her whole centrist, moderate stance is just a facade. She's saying she can fix the problems that her administration has caused, but I just don't know if I can afford to take that risk. All these policies that she's saying she's going to implement on day one of presidency, why, why does she have to wait until, what, January 20th to do that? So yeah, it wasn't just Laura Ingram or Fox News. Even voters are unconvinced by that ABC debate and Kamala Harris. But what about you guys? Did you feel any sort of sincerity from her during that debate? Drop a yes or no in the comments, guys. And while you're at it, I would totally appreciate a tap on that like button and subscribe to the channel. That way we can keep these videos going and keep growing our community of like-minded people. You guys are the reason why I'm here. So let's keep this thing going. Now we got plenty more in this one, so stay right there, guys. So JD Vance, he said it would be a national scandal if the whistleblower lower claim is true that ABC News gave Vice President Kamala Harris a leg up in her debate against Donald Trump earlier this month. But more interesting is how the Ohio Senator doubled down on his commitment in this upcoming debate with Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz, hosted by CBS, even if he thinks it won't be a fair showdown. For the vice presidential candidate, it's a matter of going anywhere and talking to everyone. And according to J.D. Vance, if that means that there's going to be a slightly biased debate, he doesn't care. That's the price of doing business. But let's be real for a second here, guys. There's no need to rely on that unverified affidavit. Anyone with eyes could see that last week's debate was clearly a partisan attempt to sabotage the public discourse. That was supposed to be a 90-minute exchange between the candidates turned into something else, with ABC moderators jumping into the fray and taking an active role as participants. We saw them issue six so-called 
fact checks against former President Donald Trump while allowing Vice President Kamala Harris to repeat debunked hoaxes, such as the lie that the former president was referring to neo-Nazis when he said that there were fine people on both sides of the Charlottesville controversy. I mean, let's not forget the first instance of a presidential debate fact check that happened 12 years ago when CNN's Candy Crowley intervened in the debate between former Governor Mitt Romney and President Barack Obama. Not only did her actions reveal a clear personal bias, but her attempt to correct the Republican nominee also displayed her profound ignorance of the issue at hand. It was simply her opinion, unsolicited and unhelpful. Now it's like we're seeing Crowley 2.0 with Muir and Davis, because in an ideal scenario, a neutral debate forum would offer fact-checking equally to both candidates, not just one. For instance, ABC News could have challenged Kamala Harris on her Charlottesville claim by pointing out that Donald Trump's transcript made it very clear that he was referring only to those who opposed to tearing down historic statues as fine people. But ABC wasn't exactly impartial as we saw. Like her CNN predecessor, ABC's Lindsey Davis fact-checked Donald Trump on an issue that she herself didn't fully understand. She confirmed that there is no state in the country where it is legal to kill a baby after it's born, as if she were speaking from the Democratic platform. Yet, former Virginia Governor Ralph Northam, a Democrat, once described in a radio interview what can happen during a partial birth abortion procedure. The infant would be delivered. The infant would be be kept comfortable. The infant would be resuscitated if that's what the mother and the family desired, and a discussion would ensue between the physicians and the mother. So, where's the lie, Davis? It doesn't take a whistleblower to see that ABC had no intention of being an impartial moderator. David Muir, who leads the most liberal news program on traditional television, he consistently leans left. Now, according to Media Research Center, 93% of his stories about Mr. Trump were negative, while 100% of stories about Ms. Harris were positive. Davis is Harris's sorority sister. Senior Disney executive Dana Walden, whose portfolio includes ABC News, is very close friends with the vice president. Even Disney itself, a company that has long moved away from its family-friendly roots and embraced a more progressive agenda of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Disney's recent show, Star Wars, The Acolyte, was canceled last month due to poor reception with audiences giving it a low 18% score on Rotten Tomatoes. Frustrated by what many saw as thinly disguised leftist propaganda. And we may have seen this Disney directive in the debate as well when the Disney ABC moderators repeatedly cut off the Republican nominee just as he started to gain traction. A lot of times, we saw them changing the topic to something more favorable to the Democratic candidate. It kind of makes you think, instead of muting the candidate's microphones, maybe it's the moderator's microphones that should be muted with their role limited to keeping time. I read a book a long time ago and it basically said something that was really powerful and profound to me and it said something along the lines of look at your five closest friends and typically your income is an average of your five closest friends now with that being said i was kind of like thinking okay well how do i find people who made way more than me so i could increase my chances of having a higher income i mean it only made sense right for less than a cup of coffee a day for less than a dollar a day join a powerful network of people who are ready to change their lives for the better and i will be putting a limit on this group so get in while you can be positively motivated by others who are also on the same pursuit so I'm going to leave a link for you guys so you can join me over on the Life Pursuit Network in the description down below this video. So check it out, guys, and let's not be a victim of this great wealth transfer that is taking place right now. I mean, just look. Just look at how this crowd in the Shanksville Volunteer Fire Department on September 11th, 9-11, reacted to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris compared to how they reacted to former President Donald Trump when they walk in. They definitely know what's what.
He stole his hat! <laughs> How would you describe that, guys? A lukewarm welcome for the president and the VP compared to a blazing hot interest for Donald Trump that was met with cheers? I mean, the difference was night and day between how they greeted Kamala Harris and Joe Biden compared to Donald Trump. Like the man said, no more third debate. As anybody can plainly see, Donald Trump does not have to prove his vision for America. And many would agree that the last four years under the Biden-Harris regime has been a complete disaster. What do you guys think? Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you guys are liking the information that we're sharing in this update. And we're about halfway through this video, so plenty more where this came from. Stick around, we got a lot to share with you guys right now. So if anybody lost this presidential debate, it wasn't Donald Trump, it was ABC News actually. During the debate, ABC News moderators, David Muir and Lindsey Davis made the bold decision to fact check candidates in real time. But surprise, surprise, none of the fact checks were directed at Kamala Harris. Wonder why? All four of the moderators, live corrections were all made against Donald Trump. And some were quite subjective if you paid attention. I mean, you can easily compare this with the strategy of countless other moderators like Jake Tapper and Dana Bash who choose to trust that voters can check facts on their own. You see, they acknowledge that political campaigns are often full of exaggerations, whether from Republicans or even from Democrats. Trump did get those fact checks, but what about Vice President Kamala Harris and her claims that could have easily warranted a correction? For example, she repeated a widely debunked claim about the racist Charlottesville rally that even Snopes debunked and her comments on Donald Trump's bloodbath remark and the late term abortion could have also been addressed. Davis even checked Donald Trump on that, but many say that it was somewhat of a dubious fact check. Commentators like Ann Coulter criticized the debate's fairness with Coulter stating Donald Trump is having to fight all three other people on stage. I've never seen such an unfair debate. She said that the ABC debate was worse than Candy Crowley correcting Romney and then admitting that she was wrong hours after the debate. Now, honestly, guys, it's kind of surprising Republicans even agreed to a debate on ABC in the first place. I mean, for years, Trump era conservatives have been urging the Republican National Committee to starve legacy news networks of their lucrative access to debates. This movement gained so much traction that RNC chairwoman Rona McDaniel led the decision to withdraw from the storied commission on presidential debates. Billionaire tech mogul and one of Donald Trump's biggest supporters, Vivek Ramaswamy, also said something about it in a primary debate last November. He took the opportunity to criticize the traditional debate format, suggesting instead that this should be Tucker Carlson, Joe Rogan, and even Elon Musk. I mean, could you imagine? According to Ramaswamy, we'd have 10 times the viewership asking questions that GOP primary voters actually care about, bringing more people into our party. Now, as for independents, their trust in the press is near record lows. And really guys, the rise of independent journalists means that there are plenty of viable alternatives for both parties to consider. Like our channel right here. What would you guys say of us actually hosting someone from Donald Trump's campaign right here on our channel, guys? Hit the like button if you guys think that this would be a good idea. Even Donald Trump, who is undeniably skilled in media strategy, recently highlighted this massive shift during an interview on Let's Friedman's podcast. He said that politically, you have to see where the audience is and engage with them there. And that's when he mentioned that platforms like X are reaching massive audiences. He recalled a time when he joined Elon Musk for a Twitter Spaces session and they got numbers like no one's ever heard before. For Trump, you wouldn't do that on radio. You wouldn't do those numbers. No matter how good a show you have, you wouldn't do those numbers on radio. You wouldn't do those numbers on television. So really, does Trump need the likes of ABC and CNN anymore? I think that debate just kind of showed us the answer. What do you think, guys? Drop a quick yes in the comments down below if this is making sense to you guys. And if you want more content like this, do not hesitate. Subscribe to the channel now. Hit that notification bell right after that. It's totally free to do so. And that way you can have our latest updates delivered right to your device. Like this other video where we talk about the former President Donald Trump going viral on TikTok for his closing statement in the debate. Kind of makes you wonder, even against all odds, who really won that presidential debate? Definitely not one to miss you guys. So check that one out right after this one. But hey, I'm not gonna keep you guys long. I just wanna say thanks again for watching. Thank you for liking the video and subscribing. I'll see y'all next time.